Hello again everyone, Age of Dune here. We're back with another League of Legends shoutcast. Just got done watching the day two of the LCS. Super weak. And I'm kind of enjoying it. I turned into RF Legendary's channel and I noticed that not only is he playing, but Fabi and Only Jack Smith are all in a game together. And I knew I had to go ahead and cast this game immediately. <laughs> So, even though it's a little earlier than I would normally be casting a game, I actually don't need to upload a game for another two days like th from this. But I'm going to go ahead and cast this now, and we are going to do this. Hopefully, it'll be very entertaining. I know seeing Fabi is almost always entertaining, and honestly, seeing RF Legendary is pretty much always entertaining too. Interesting, he's playing... Jace, he is very big on Nidalee. He loves the Nidalee character, but he does play other characters at times. Apparently people whine at him when he does, so he doesn't like to do it a lot. Because, I don't know why, people just want to see him play Nidalee all the time. But he is playing Jace this time, so those people can just get over it, right? But, anyway, in this particular game, I have a feeling it's going to be him top. He is going to be against Kha'Zix, played by Rowhammers. The mid lane, we're going to have Lissandra, played by Clackbard, versus Ari, played by Prophet, with a strange O. By the way, I've been seeing a lot of Ari recently. A very large amount of Ari. So she's definitely come back into the gameplay as a very strong character, I guess. And I we're seeing a, a lot of her in the Imagine LCS a and a lot of her in Diamond. So it's kind of interesting to see how for a while she was just considered underpowered and completely useless and everything else, but now she's considered one of the stronger all-in characters. So I kind of enjoy being able to see the, the, the changes that happen over time. All right, now down bot we've got Tristana, played by Cutie Love. Oh my, hold on, what is this? No, a little bit farther back. What? Okay, even farther. So what exactly happened here? Because our blood there did really well, and then all of a sudden Kha'Zix is just tearing him apart. There's the ignite. The flash comes out from <laughs> RF Legendary. He does make it to his tower. And, oh, now Kha'Zix is really close to dying. There is the Ignite from Jace, and now Kha'Zix is in a little bit of trouble. I think he'll be able to live this. There is the Mist Q there, and oh, first blood goes down for Kha'Zix. And Jace goes down because he missed that, I believe it's the Q, isn't it? It might be, yeah, it is Q. Ah, doesn't show, but yeah, okay, there we go. It is indeed two, uh, Q, right there. All right, back to the bot lane. We've got Twitch, played by Fabby, who everybody knows, and a lot of people quite enjoy watching. So, that should be entertaining. He is playing Twitch, who is one of his big characters. His main characters are Draven, Vayne, and Twitch. Although I have a feeling that since Draven got nerfed, we're not going to see him playing that character as much anymore. Because he is somewhat less powerful. He is actually buffed in the next patch, however because his passive stacks are going to be consumed all at once now. So we'll have to see what ends up happening there. There was a nice kill there, and I do want to go ahead and take a look at what just happened in mid lane. Go back, no, let's go a little further back. There we go. Ari and Lissandra just doing a little bit. Jax came into the gank. She did flash out of that. We saw that, but apparently she went back in and Ari went back in. Maybe they both, I don't know. Okay, there we go. Ari did go back in. They are just damaging it up. There's the Ignite from Lissandra and the Ignite from Ari. And wow, that was pretty funny. I like that. They just kind of killed each other at the same time. One for one trade, not too bad. So far, both teams are just about even in kills. Well, actually, they are even in kills, not just about. And uh, Tristana's being really, really forced back here. She's got two people against one, and that's never really a good sign. <laughs> when you are the AD carry. So she is going to be forced to go all the way back, go ahead, get some life back, and then come on back out. Whereas Fabi's going to be able to farm this up, get that experience, and I'd imagine he'll go back fairly shortly, but we'll have to see. For now, he's just getting that CS. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at the supports. We've got Sona, played by Slushy, with a strange wad that I'm probably not going to be able to type in. Oh, more stuff up here. Hold on. Go back. Alright, so 
this Kha'Zix is really showing the strength of Kha'Zix now. He does have a lot of damage. There we go. He jumps into that bush. The Q from Jace was missed again. He's trying to get out, but that does not end up happening. So that is the second kill for Kha'Zix. And things are not looking very pretty for Jace here. All right. We've got Nami, played by Heart Thief Lux. And then finally, we've got the junglers, one of whom is actually preparing to gank here, but is picked up by this ward, so that's probably not going to happen. G the Lee Sin is played by XX Faxon. And oh, he does make that. I do like how that last split second there, you can take damage and it will not break it. So I've seen a few times that that's happened. Finally, we've got Jax, played by Only Jaximus who I used to watch a decent amount, and he rarely actually played Jaximus, even though his name is only Jaximus. But even with that, he was still pretty entertaining to watch, and it is kind of cool to see him back on Jax again, because for the longest time, he just refused to play that Jax. Nice little bit of engage there. By the way, Fabi and only Jaximus are actually dual queued at the moment, according to, Fa uh, according to I think, Fabi's. I'm not sure who's. I think it was Fabby's Twitch. I'm not sure. No, it might have been Only Jacksmith. It would have been Only Jacksmith because I didn't see Fabby. That's right. So yeah, according to Only Jacksmith's Twitch, it is indeed a duo queue between the two of them. So see if they've got a little extra ability to work together this game or not. Ooh, nice, very nice there from the Ari, and Lissandra is forced to use that ability to get out. In comes the ghost from Jax. And he's going to go in, and he just ripped her apart. One shot. She is gone. Very nicely played by him. Very good use of Ghost to get him into that and just take her down. Kha'Zix is actually getting low here. I think Rarf Legendary may be getting revenge. Yes, he does get revenge for those kills on cut from Kha'Zix. And now he's quite happy there. Nice escape there by Ari, and she almost pulled him back into the tower range too, which is actually what gave her the upper hand there against that Cassandra. It was a very nice charm from that Ari, and not always easy to land, but when you do, <laughs> you can you can really mess things up. So, all right, looks like the Sona and Tristana combo down here. Gonna go ahead, go in on this double golem here. That way they can get a little bit more CS, a little bit more XP, so they can come back to lane and not be too far behind. Especially since Fabi is here, pretty much just while locking this lane down for the t moment. It's not gonna be able to stay there for too long because it is actually pushing there are a lot of caster minions here for the red team but for now he is keeping it pretty well locked down and nami's just there hiding in that bush ready and waiting there is the cast throw from twitch he's now going in not the nami bubble hits sona sona goes down to the expunge and sona just got back into lane but she is forced to die again and tristana has to hide back there under the turret nami is a very very fun champion. I have played her a decent amount in normals recently, and I really love landing those bubbles. It's different from Tarek because, you know, Tarek, I just stun. It's a click stun, and, you know, you land it. There, there is no dodging. But with, with Nami, they can actually dodge it, so it just feels that much better when you manage to land it, or if, say, you're running away, and you stick it behind you as you're running, it just feels really good because you just completely blocked them and they're just kind of sad there. There was another missed Q there from RF Legendary. He's not not uh, landing those Qs very well. In comes Lissandra. Looks like she's coming in for a gank. There is the flash from Jace and it looks like she will not be able to take him down. Very nice flash there. Just barely saved his life and he would get just enough time to react so he could get out from under that tower because they were going to tower dive him anyway. So he does end up living through that and he's able to go back and heal up and then come back to lane with a little bit, a little few more items. He's actually going Spirit Stone, which, I don't know, I don't think I've ever seen that before. Ooh, Lee Sin just died. He came into lane, landed that Q, and I guess, ah, oh, there we go, he used that to farm. And in she goes, there is the all-in that Ari is so good at, and she just ripped him apart. That is the very big strength of Ari, she's able to just ult in, that little damage comes out, then she uses that charm, and they're not going to get away after she does that. Very nice Q there, and I think Kha'Zix might be dead. Oh, he jumps over the wall. He's still picked up by this ward, though, so if he can land a Q, the Kha'Zix may end up going down. Jax is coming in to help, and... Oh, jump to the ward. The Jax was slowed, though, by that Kha'Zix. Kha'Zix is forced to flash, 
but he goes down to that Q from the Jace anyway. He thought for sure he was going to escape, but that accelerated Q meant that no, there was no escape. And Jax is going to take this moment to go ahead and steal blue. But in comes the Lissandra and the Lee Sin. And Jax is in a bit of trouble here. He's going to go ahead and try to take down the Lissandra. She's going to ult herself, though. Actually, no, she ulted him, sorry. And he did end up going down without being able to take her. So now double buff actually went to Lee Sin. Which means, on the plus side, Lissandra still does not have that blue versus Ari, which is great for Ari. Ari has double buff, whereas Lissandra's got nothing. So very likely Ari is going to be able to push her off the lane again and just completely bully her like crazy. Now Kha'Zix is on his way back up here. Lee Sin is coming in as well, but he is picked up by that ward. So the Jace is going to go ahead and fall back. Looks like Sona just went down again. I don't know if it was a turret dive or what. There is the bubble from Nami. Twitch comes in. He is forced to rock away. There's the heal from Nami, though. And this is where we actually saw. And I guess right after we left is when they can... Oh, Tristana jumped in. And he's immediately forced to flash out. But... Oh, oh. I mixed that up. He was actually Sona getting the kill, not... Not Twitch. Okay, so that was actually a double kill there for the Sona. She actually flashed to get that final kill. So, whereas I thought that these guys had actually gotten the kill on Sona, it was actually the exact opposite. So that was a very nice little surprise there. And yet again, there is that Sona, that Ari all in. She does manage to take him down, and that refreshes her buffs, which is terrible news for uh, Lissandra. As if I were, I'd rewind it for just a second here. Before she goes in on this, she's got less... Actually, she's just about to lose her blue. Yeah, there we go. While she was in the middle of it, she lost that blue. And she would not have had that to bully Lissandra anymore. But by going in and taking him out there, using her all in, she got that blue buff back. Which means she's got another cycle of blue to push that Lissandra off lane and deny her everything. So that was not good for Lissandra at all. And she wasn't even there. It wasn't it wasn't anything she did, but it means very bad things for her indeed. Jax is down here, gonna go ahead and solo this dragon. There are no wards from either team. So luckily for him, the blue team has no idea that he's doing this. Nami and Twit, actually just Nami, is on her way over. She's gonna go ahead and heal him up and help him to finish this dragon up a little bit. I am curious, what exactly does she level. It looks like the heal first, as I expected, but actually, Tidecaller's Blessing is apparently level second? Maybe first, I'm not sure. I think second, though. Heal, I, I always level the heal first as well, but I've been leveling the Q first, but even with that, it is such a long cooldown that I still only end up getting one. So I think I may end up switching myself around to go with this and level that instead, because it does allow your AD carry to do a lot more damage. As you can see here, there is a nice bubble there from the Nami. There goes her ulti. The ulti comes out from Sona. In comes the Tristana. Oh, Lee Sin's coming up in the gate. Nami goes down. Tristana's going in on the Twitch. I think Fabi might be able to take her down before he dies, but it's going to be close. Oh, he's going to get a double kill. He does not get a double kill. Thanks to that Lee Sin shield, they were about half a second away from getting the double kill there on that Tristana, but Lee Sin saved her life. And she's able to kill him. And that ended, I think, did that end up being a double kill for her? No, that was a single kill for her, but she still got an assist. See what happened there. There's a nice little engagement up top. Yet again, RF Legendary. I think he was warding over here, and Kha'Zix found him. Went in on him. There is Ignite. Right. Where, where, actually, where is the Ignite? I know I saw it. Ooh, missed Q again. So there we go. It was not an Ignite quite yet. It does happen a little later, though. So there we go. He jumps in. There is the Ignite we saw a little while ago. The punt back from Jace. And now in comes Jax, and the Kha'Zix is forced to run. Jax comes in. He is going to land that stun, though. And now the, the Kha'Zix is in trouble. It looks like he will escape this, though. Had that Q from Jace landed, the Kha'Zix would now be dead. But instead, it ended up hitting a minion, and that did not end up going quite as well as he'd hoped. Kha'Zix is going to jump in, but Jace is able to take him out just before he takes Jace out. So that did not go well at all for the Kha'Zix, and things are now in the favor of Jace. Whereas for a while there, things were looking great for Kha'Zix. He was two kills up, and everything was great. And then he gave that first kill to Jace, which, you know, was not all that great, but, you know, it wasn't terrible. It happens. 
But then the second kill came out, and they were then tied. And now that third kill came out, and Jace is in the lead now. And Kha'Zix is probably getting a little worried here. Oh, there's a tempted charm there. Did not end up landing. Not sure what she was doing standing over there. I guess she was just waiting for Lissandra to come out just far enough to go ahead and go in on her, but that did not end up happening. There's the MIA ping from the blue team saying, watch out, bot lane MIA, I don't know where they are. And Jace is now back to lane. Interestingly, he is not building a tier, which I always thought was a fairly core item on Jace, so you can go ahead and get that Merriman. But it looks like RF Legendary is actually going to build him a little different from what I've always seen. And he's going for more armor and... that He's actually doing pretty well against the Kha'Zix in this little engage. There is the ulti though from the Kha'Zix. Missed that Q again. And there is the ward though, so I think he will be able to take him out. He does indeed, and Kha'Zix goes down again. Thanks to that ward. Without that ward, he actually might not have been able to do so. Let's go ahead and go back here. Nice little engagement there from the Jace, and he has definitely tipped things 100% in his favor now. He's able to win one-on-one -on -one engagements without any problem whatsoever. So that's kind of cool to see. And fairly soon we'll see the engagement down here that attracted my attention. I rewound a little bit too far, but it looks like Jax is on his way down, as are Twitch and Nami. And Tristana and Sona are on their way back up as well. And in goes the Twitch, he is stealth, and he's going in now, goes ahead, lands that cask on the Sona, who is slow, flashes away from the ulti, is able to take her down, there's the Nami ulti, as well as the heal on the Twitch, Twitch is barely surviving, and oh, he does end up surviving, she goes down, actually, he gets the kill, which is kind of interesting, I don't know if he got it from Expunge or what, but she ends up going down to that, I think he might have got it with his last tick of his ulti last shot of his ulti before it expired so very nicely played by them he barely survived that but surviving it he, he survived it he did that was very nicely played by him now it looks like jace is thinking about going in on this tower not sure he'll be able to take it before kha'zix gets here no he's gonna go ahead and fall back just let the minions do a little damage to it he doesn't really want it to fall quite yet because that does give kha'zix the ability to roam and we look here in the mid lane they're both just kind of playing passive at the moment not much going on there, but now Lee Sin's gonna go ahead and give this blue buff to Lissandra. That'll be her first blue buff of the game. Ari already has her blue buff, and it is actually halfway gone. So she's been pressuring that Lissandra with blue buff for quite some time, and I have a feeling when she comes back, she's probably gonna try to wrest control of Lissandra's blue buff from her. We'll have to see. Down here, we've got Fabi just farming up, pushing to the tower, and yet again, Sona's really low. Even though she just died, she's already really low, and this is just a killer combo for them. They are not able to counter it, and we're getting to where Twitch, or Trist is into her not-so-good phase as she's switching from AP to AD because of the fact that her skills mostly scale off of AP. She's got that small amount of time where she's not really doing a ton of damage with her auto attacks, but she's also not doing a ton of damage with her abilities so she's kind of in between and during that time is when she is at her weakest and right now is when fabi and nami are really doing great they've got to prevent her from getting to that late game though because she does get that huge range and she will be able to siege towers like crazy looks like the lee sin is coming down to prevent that from happening though he's coming in for a gank he was picked up by the ward in goes the lee sin but they were able to escape this with no problem he ended up missing his q and it looks like the Twitch actually dodged it by jumping over to the side. Very nicely played there. And yet again, it looks like Jace is going in on the Kha'Zix, forcing him off of lane. I want to see that whole engagement, see exactly what happened there. Kha'Zix came into lane. There's Jace just waiting in the bush. Kha'Zix is just kind of blocking the lane. There was the Q there from the Jace. But I'm not sure exactly how he did so much damage. I have a feeling there was another Q right after this minion dies. Nope, apparently not. Nope, he just does a little harass there, and there's that Q. Jumps in with a hammer for him, does a little bit of damage there, ignites him as well, so Kha'Zix got really close to dying, but he did not quite die. Got down to 25 health. One more auto attack would have finished him, but honestly, Jace was a little worried about being able to do that, especially since he had switched to hammer form, so he would have had to get within melee range in order to do so, and that would not have been what happened. 
Fabi goes down again, thanks to that Lee Sin gank, as well as the wonderful Sona ult there, which landed on both of them. He tr Twitch tried to take down the, I believe the Trist, before dying, but he was not able to do it. Now in comes Ari and Jay, or Jax, I mean, and they're gonna go ahead and turret dive this. The charm does get missed, but in goes the Jax, and manages to stun. The Sona melts immediately. Lee Sin goes down as well, and Tristana's gonna go ahead and escape by jumping out of this. But that ended up not going so well for the blue team. But Lissandra was able to push up mid and take down Ari's turret in the meantime. And now she's going in and doing some damage to the inner turret, whereas the red team's gonna go ahead and take this time to go ahead and grab the dragon. And she does end up backing away from this turret. She doesn't know where they are. She does not want to die. But that does make red team a little worried because she kind of, she headed this way, so they figured he might be going for Jace. And actually, it looks like she actually might be. She said actually twice. There you go. She just jumped over, and she is indeed going towards Jace. I don't know if it's going to work, especially since Twitch is rapidly coming up here. She is going in on him there. Jace goes in on Kha'Zix. Kha'Zix jumps in. The ulti comes out from the Lissandra, but in comes Twitch. There he goes. He's tearing her apart. She manages to escape that so far. The cast comes out, going in on the Kha'Zix. If he expunges right now, they're both dead. Oh, he does manage to take them both down, and he dies for it. So that ended up being a two for two. Not quite what he was hoping there, but he did end up getting two kills for himself, which is good because he is the AD carry. So for Twitch alone, that was great, but because of the fact that Jace died for the red team, it didn't end up quite as well as it could have. And in the meantime, that meant that... Tristana down here and Sona were able to go in and take down this tower. So all in all, I think the blue team actually came out a little bit ahead in that just because of the fact that they got those two kills, they got the tower, and wow, looks like Jax is actually going in on the Lee Sin under the tower. Almost died there. But he did manage to jump out, so he's okay. And now it looks like the Nami's actually waiting for Twitch to come, and he's probably going to lock the lane a little bit. Just keep it stuck here. No, he's actually going to push it. I was wrong. Oh well. It happens, it happens. He is going to get the CS though, and it looks like he's just going to push the lane out, and I don't know. He may end up pushing it to the tower, because this tower is pretty low, and that will actually be the first tower kill by the red team, which I didn't even realize that they hadn't got a tower down yet. The blue team has managed to get two towers down so far, so the red team's actually behind in towers. They're still up in gold because of the dragon they've gotten, as well as the kills they've gotten. But the towers are pretty big, and they really need to go ahead and grab those soonish. The minions aren't going to be able to take it quite yet. Lee Sin's a little bit too close. I uh, need to go check that out up top. They're going to be able to do some damage to it. Let's go see what happens up here. Kha'Zix is at full health. There's that tower. Actually, no, that's what why that popped back up again. Kha'Zix is at full health, and Jace is as well. There's a Q there from Jace, getting a decent amount of damage in on Kha'Zix. There we go. He jumps in and just starts tearing him apart using that shit, that, uh, what, what is it? No, electrical aura thing. And he's going to go ahead and try to tower dive this. Kha'Zix is in a little bit of trouble. He does manage to dodge that Q, but there we go. The Jace still uses his hammer form to jump in and takes him out. Lissandra's coming to punish him for this, though. Jax is coming up from behind her. It looks like Jace is going to go ahead and hang out in this bush, waiting for her. And there we go. She is going to go in. He uses his ability there. She does lock him in place, though. In comes the Jax. The Jace was able to punt the Sona over into the Jax's range, but I don't think that's really good enough. In comes Nami to help as well, and Ari. So things are rapidly turning around and going against the blue team here. It looks like Lissandra's going to go down as well. Yes, she does. In comes Lee Sin, though. And I'm feeling he's going to have to back out because he's not going to be able to take down three of them. So that is going to be a very good engagement there for the red team. Oh, no, blue team, what are you doing? There's a nice little stun there from Nami. And it does mean that J uh, the Lee Sin goes down as well to Ari. Jackson was very good at following that stun up. In comes Kha'Zix though, manages to take down that Jax, tried to jump over the wall, ended up failing it, and it looks like Ari's gonna go ahead and grab him as well. So that is yet another kill for Ari, she's gonna get this blue buff, and then she's gonna get the heck out of here. Stana pushed it up to this tower here, and... Where's... 
Oh yeah, because they've got that tower now. So yeah, that, that, oh, that was actually what I heard. Okay, I, th I thought I heard a tower kill. That was actually the red team managing to kill this tower because the fight here had actually occupied the blue minions for long enough that the red minions were able to get up to this tower multiple waves and just, just demolish it. So, very nice engagement indeed for the red team, and they definitely came out ahead on that. Tristana looks like she's thinking about possibly going in on Jace. I don't really think that's the greatest idea. He's tough. Oh, in comes the Lee Sin, though, and that might actually change things around. He punts the Lee Sin back and then flashes out, so he's okay now, but Lissandra's coming in as well. He saw her ability, so he's going to turn around. I don't think he's going to be able to get out of this, but he's going to go in on her and push her around, but he is indeed going to go down. He just got four-man ganked, and he died. Not really surprising. If he had more wards, he probably would have been okay. But he didn't know anybody was coming until all of a sudden he was dead. Down here... Hold up. Rewind this. This whole engagement. Twitch is here grabbing double golems, and actually he leaves the big golem. He's gonna go in on this tower, try to take it down. Kha'Zix jumped in and just... Hit him with that Q. Lots of damage coming out. Fabi is going really low. Uses his barrier. He's trying to escape. He got really close there, but the Kha'Zix does end up escaping so far. No, he goes down to the Twitch Poison. That Nami single auto attack was enough to get him low enough that the Twitch Poison was able to take him. So that ended up being a one for one as well. And the red team's gonna go ahead and push up mid here and take this tower in the meantime. But Lee Sin is also taking top tower, so it's gonna be a tower for a tower here. I'm actually no, he's not doing enough damage, I think. The minions are gonna go down. He's still going in on it, taking this tower, but Jace is coming up, and I think before Lee Sin is able to kill this tower, Jace will be there. Indeed he will. He's probably gonna queue in, do a little bit of damage there, not actually much because Lee Sin jumped out. But that did protect that tower, which means that the red team got a tower for absolutely nothing. And that is not good for the blue team at all. Jace is going to go ahead and grab double golems, and it looks like these guys are actually doing a little bit of an invade here. There is no red buff, so I'm not sure exactly what they're going for, and they're just warding. Okay. They may end up going in on Tristana. Ooh, if they catch this Sona, that would be hilarious. They don't. They are going to go ahead and back off. They are picked up by that ward, but they immediately destroy it. She's going to go ahead and plant another one. She has no idea that there's a pink ward there. So they are going to go ahead and get that. Oh no for Jax. He just got engaged on. He's trying to take down the Kha'Zix before he dies, but that did not end up happening. The bumper shot there from Trist was not enough to save him, even though, you know, it wasn't intended to save him. Nami's trying to escape this Lee Sin there. It looks like she might end up going down. Very nice heal, though, as well as the charm from Ari means that she might actually end up living. The Ari also intercepted that Q. She's trying to take him down. Is it going to happen, though? Another Q oh, another heal came out from Nami just in time, and it ended up saving her life. In the meantime, though, Tristana was able to kill the Twitch. Where? Where was Tristana killing the Twitch? Okay. There we go. There's the Twitch running this way. Lissandra, it looks like, was chasing him as well. Indeed, she was. Jumps over. Lands the slow on it would be my guess. Actually, leads him in place, and Tristana just jumped in and killed him. The ult came out from Lissandra, and that was really what enabled that to happen. The... The, the Tristana pretty much ended up getting a free kill out of that. There is a pink ward there from Sona. Gonna go ahead and get rid of any wards here. She's not gonna be able to do dragon. But she's gonna clear their wards. And I've been feeling Nami's gonna go back to get wards as well. Jason, in the meantime, is just kind of chilling up here. <laughs> I guess he wanted to make sure that the enemy wasn't coming before he goes back to start farming again. Lissandra well, is indeed coming, but I think he should be okay. He is gonna be forced to go back though. Lands that Q on her, and she took a lot of damage from that, whereas he has not taken anything from her. But I'm not sure who would win in a 1-on-1 -on -one enga engagement between the two. He's 552, she is 444, but she's got a lot more CS. And honestly, I don't know how their abilities measure up between the two. I don't know who is stronger. So he's gonna go ahead, go mid. Jax is actually here, clearing out that ward that actually got him killed earlier. So he does manage to finally kill out that ward. They are now going in on Dragon. It is picked, though, by the blue team. So the blue team knows the oracles from Nami was able to kill that ward. And now it looks like Jax is actually going in on it again. Like I said, the Lee Sin went ahead and landed his Q on it. So he can go ahead, come in, try to smite, steal. In he goes. It does end up going to Jax, though. And now the stun comes out from Nami and from Jax. The Sona was able to take down the Jace. 
And it looks like so far it's just going to be a cordless time. There is the ulti from Lissandra. Lissandra goes down to Ari though. Ulti comes out from Sona. Sona ends up dying. The Lee Sin kick pushes the Jax away. In comes the Nami ulti. It does not end up hitting anybody though. The Buster Shot comes out from Lissandra. who's immediately hit by that charm from Ari. Down she goes to Jax. And that just went terribly for them. Twitch is coming in. Going to go ahead and go in on the Kha'Zix. Kha'Zix jumps over that wall. Twitch flashes over to finish him off. It does not end up happening. That ulti was not quite enough to reach him when he flashed away. He did get a free flash out of it, though. So that's, well, not a free flash, but he used flash, too. So he did get a flash out of it, but it was a flash for a flash. And I don't know if it was worth it or not. Eh, why not? It was worth it. Things went great for the red team that that fight. They got the dragon, they got multiple kills, and all in all, they're currently 7k ahead. And that is just great for them. Twitch went ahead and grabbed that blue buff, which is kind of funny. And he's going to go ahead and stealth this way. Dodged that... Is it Q? W. W from Kha'Zix. And Kha'Zix is now being engaged on by the Twitch. He gets the slow. Sona's coming up to assist Kha'Zix. Twitch's stealth is going to go off cooldown in one second. I think he's going to be able to get out of this. He is indeed. He's actually going back in though. Made them think he's running away. Now he's going to go in. There is the Play the Rune King. Was able to take down that Kha'Zix and now he's back to trying to get out. He's going to go in on Lee Sin. Lee Sin's going in on him as well. The ambush comes up soon but I don't think it's going to happen. No, the Lissandra ulti was enough to finish him off. So Lissandra gets the kill there. And now Jace is coming in from behind. He is picked up by this ward though, so he's got to watch out. They know he's here. And Lissandra might end up going in on him. And the rest of the blue team is there as well. Tristana's working her way up. They are going to go in. And he thought he was all right. Interesting ulti there from Tristana. I think she completely missed it, but he ended up going down anyway. And that was just terrible play by him. Honestly, it wasn't a terrible play. I'm kind of judging that a little harshly because he didn't know there was a ward there. But the fact that there was a ward there turned that from a great possible play into a terrible play. Honestly, even without the ward, though, he still went in on a three versus one. So, I don't know. I, I think it was still could have been a little bit better thought out. But he actually might have been able to do it, you know? Uh, it's what he figured, I guess. But it ended up not happening, and he ended up dying. But... I do like that whole thing. Actually, it does kind of look like a weapon, isn't it? It looks like an axe. I don't know what it is on this guy. I don't know what it is with this skin. I haven't really seen it. In comes the Kha'Zix going in on him. The ulti from Nami comes out and manages to destroy the entire team there. So they will not be able to get any kills from this. The Ari's just kind of keeping them pressed back here. Gonna go ahead and clear out this wave would be my guess. The Q comes out from the J. So they're gonna go ahead and clear out this wave with that Nami or that Ari. And there is the back ping from the blue team saying, watch out, we don't want to get in a team fight here. These guys are just too powerful. And honestly, they really are. Who wants a piece of Ice form the gauntlet, spear the elder lizard. Okay, I can see that because of the burn. And let's see. Maybe Bloodthirster, I don't know. I, I, like I said, I, I'm very surprised not to see Mana Mew. It's kind of curious. Honestly though, RF Legendary is known for his very interesting builds. I mean, I've seen him build a lot of interesting things. Like on Middly, he likes to build, I believe he called it Delta League, where he just spams the heck out of giant spells. And honestly, he makes it work. So, more power to him, you know? And he's really actually making it work here on Jace. Well, he was, or, uh, as we saw up there in the lane, he was able to turn that around, so he went from being behind to actually being in the lead. So he is able to make these interesting builds work, which is very, very cool. Because you're able to see things that you really wouldn't expect. I really do enjoy that. In goes the Kha'Zix, but he was very surprised there. Went down in half an instant to that Twitch and Jay's combo. In goes the Jax, gonna go ahead and jump in. Looks like he's gonna try to take down the Sona. Sona ultimately comes out. The Jace, or Jax ends up going down. Tristana, or is that Tristana? No, that's Lee Sin. Lee Sin and Twitch are going in on it. Lissandra went down to Jace, and the Lee Sin actually came out of that behind because Jace came in to help. Nice charm there from the Ari. Managed to keep Tristana long enough that she ended up going down. And now Ari's just gonna, gonna go back here. She's waiting for the minions. No, the, looks like the Jace is gonna go ahead and tank this. So they are gonna get this tower. 
They've got seven seconds before Kha'Zix comes up. They're going to get this inhibitor as well, and they're probably going to back off after. They are indeed. And they probably need to push this back, as their bot lane is pushing pretty hard. Top lane is as well. Interesting place to go back there for Twitch. He ended up getting hit by that Kha'Zix, which interrupted his back. He's going to have to walk away and try to go back again. He didn't die, at least, so that's no problem. And Jace is going to go ahead and find the jungle a bit. Probably a good idea, get him a little bit more money. How much is he floating right now? He's got 1,500. Not quite enough. I don't I don't remember exactly how much Bloodthirster costs when you have a BF sword. But he's probably getting pretty close to it at the moment. Not all the way there, but pretty close. Alright, he's just pushing this lane back, as I said. And he's going to go ahead, come on out to... Interesting. Back pings? I don't know who's pinging. It doesn't show me in chat. It doesn't show any chat at all. So I don't know exactly who's pinging. And it looks like he's going to stick around here. But Lissandra's coming in and it might end up being dangerous for him. There she is. She's going to go in on him. He's going to go in on her though. And she's just able to use that ulti to just destroy him instantly. There was not a chance there for him at all. And very nicely played there by that Lissandra. And he does end up being killed. He is back. It looks like he does not have enough to buy whatever it is he was saving for. Actually, yes, he does. And there we go. It was indeed a bloodthirster. So he did have just enough gold to buy it. Yeah, he had exactly enough gold to buy it. So at the time that I mentioned he didn't have enough gold, but he was getting close, I was exactly right. He did not have enough gold, but he was really close. Getting those minion kills up there were just enough to tip him over the edge that he had enough of that Bloodthirster. He has the Bloodthirster now, and he's going to be a lot more dangerous once he gets a little bit of farm on that Bloodthirster. Pings from both teams all over the place. Yeah, the... Blue team seems to be saying, hey, we need to go ahead and ward up Baron here. Pink ward from the red team means that these wards are not going to be sticking around. And the Nami has oracles as well, so she's going to go ahead and clear out wards from the blue team. This ward's probably going to get destroyed by the Nami. The Kha'Zix is kind of pressuring the Jaxxal a little bit. Another ward comes out from the Nami. She says, fine. In goes the Twitch, and down goes the Kha'Zix. That was a very nice little combo there. The Jax did a little bit of damage, Twitch did a lot of damage, and then Jace came in for the cleanup with the accelerated Q. Very nice indeed. Ari's over there grabbing her blue buff. Very important on her. Jace actually got blue buff off of that. Which is kind of cool for him. Jace with blue buff is great. Means his mana is no problem whatsoever, and he's going to have some really nice cooldowns. So he's going to go ahead and push this lane back, act like they're not doing Baron, while the rest of his team heads on up there to that Baron. There are no wards here from the blue team. Actually, there is a ward here from the blue team. So they know that the red team was heading on over. Tristana's all the way down here, which is terrible for her. That means this is going to be a three versus five. And that is really, really much in the red team's favor. Lee Sin tried to Baron steal. He did not manage to be able to do it. He died for his effort. And the kill went to Ari. So that is a red for the red team. A red for the red team. Really? No. That is a Baron for the red team. And now they are far more dangerous. Tristana is still split pushing here. And it looks like she's targeting this tower. But the re the red team is actually going ahead and pushing here. And Ari is the only one going back to go ahead and push on the off chance that the, the Tristana does indeed continue pushing. And she is. She's continuing to push. And, ooh, that. I just saw a flash. There we go, there's the flash. And Twitch actually does the exact thing that Wild Turtle did in the game against... Actually, no. I'm not gonna, not gonna say any more. On the off chance you guys haven't seen it, I do not want to spoil that for you. So, forget I said anything. And... Oh, very nice Zanya's there from Ari. She will end up living. She takes down that Tristana. And that's probably going to be GG. The red team is taking down the inhibitor. Three members of the blue team are dead. And there is the surrender. Boom. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the items here. We've got Jace with 181 CS versus 165 for Kha'Zix. He is 788 versus 5123. Started out great, but ended up falling down to RF Legendary Superior Skills. The Jace has Iceborne Gauntlet, Bloodthirster, Speed of the Elder Lizard, and a Ninja Tabby versus Last Whisper, BF Sword, Boots of Ability, the Home Guard Enchant, Brutalizer, Vampire Scepter, and a Doran's Blade. 
The Ari has 286 CS versus 255 for Lissandra. She's actually not that far ahead there, but kill death assist. She's actually very far ahead. She is 1225 12, versus 775. She's got Rabinon's Death Cap, Zonya's Hourglass, Rylai's Crystal Scepter, Void Staff, Sorcerer's Shoes, the Home Garden Chant, and Doran's Blade, uh, Ring. She's actually one item away from a full build there. The Lissandra's got Rabinon's Death Cap, Void Staff, Morello Namakon, Needlessly Large Rod, Sorcerer's Shoes with the Home Garden Chant, and a Doran's Ring. Looks like she was pro actually, I'm not sure what she was building there. Because you don't need one of those for that anymore, so I'm not sure exactly what that builds into anymore. Outside of the sort of the Rabadons. I don't play mid enough, man. Alright. Fabi, the Twitch, is at 230 CS versus 245 for Tristani. He's actually a little bit behind there, but he is 1684, where she's only 545, so she he is way ahead there. He's got Infinity Edge, Blade of the Rune King, of course, Static Shiv, Last Whisper, and a Berserker's Greaves. He also was one item away from a full build outside of his boots enchantment. She's got Infinity Edge, Blade of the Rune King, Zeal, Berserker's Greaves, and Double Dorans. Nami's at 23 CS versus 14 for Sona. Supports, doesn't matter. 1, 2, 20 versus 3, 9, 9. That's the number you look at. Pretty big difference there in Nami's favor. She's got Aegis of the Legion, Ruby Sidestone, Boots of Mobility, which I've kind of enjoyed building on my supports recently. And I think I'm going to do that a lot more often. Kindle Gem, Philosopher's Stone, and a Sight Ward versus Ruby Sidestone, Chalice of Harmony, Philosopher's Stone, Emblem of Valor, Ruby Crystal, and Boots of Speed. The Jax is at 122 CS versus 124 for Lee Sin. That's actually the closest this game. 3, 4, 13 versus 4, 7, 6. He's got Blade of the Rune King, Spear of the Ancient Golem, Phage, Ninja Tabby, Amplifying Tome, and a Sapphire Crystal. Looks like he was probably going for a... In the end, a Trinity Force. Would be my guess. Versus the... Lee Sin, who's got Luck of the Iron Solari, Spear of the Ancient Golem, Boots of Mobility, Giant's Belt, Sightstone, and a Cloth Armor. So that is the end of this game. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I shall see you guys next time. I must say, I'm very happy to see these guys in a team together. That was actually very enjoyable indeed, and I'm glad I cast it. So anyway, as I was saying, have a good night. Bye.